Well, I think as I see it, you know, there's resilience, which is a sort of description of a situation that a person has faced adversity and has been able to recover from it. The danger comes in making that into a trait. Now, there are people whose research suggests that there, it, it is fair to talk about something called hardiness, which is much more a trait that you bring to situations. And that, that's fair enough that uh, having at least average intelligence and having uh, you know, a sort of positive outlook, these things that contribute to hardiness. And the research shows, for example, that soldiers who score high on the hardiness scale, when they go into war in Iraq or Afghanistan, they're less likely to come back traumatized by their combat experience. But the danger about making resilience into a trait is then you quickly move into when you observe somebody who is overwhelmed, you attribute it not to the overwhelming nature of the situation, but to a deficit on their part. And I like to, to joke that, you know, there'll be a new diagnosis soon of resilience deficiency disorder. And then some kids will have RDD, you know, and, and then they'll have ADHD too, and then they'll have excessive alphabet syndrome. They'll have too many names after. Uh, Harry Stack Sullivan, a great psychiatrist who mostly studied schizophrenics, you know, he wrote uh, humans are more, human beings are more simply human than otherwise. And I, partly what I take that to mean is that, that if you strip away labels and, and diagnoses, you look at the actual person in front of you and say, you know, what can we understand about their life, understanding they're trying to make sense of their life through their own perspective. Now, if they have schizophrenia, they're, they're looking at the world through a, a sort of distorted lens, but it's still a person looking at the world. And, and that, I think that general orientation will help in this. When I see somebody who's drowning in their lives, my first thought is not what's wrong with them at the drowning, but rather it must be a really difficult sea they live in, and maybe nobody ever taught them to swim. And maybe they've got one hand tied behind their back so they can't swim anyway. So that sort of compassion about trying to understand uh, as a legitimate human experience, the experience of the other, is I think is a way to sort of recover from this resilience as a trait and get back to resilience as a celebration of a particular success without implications that it implies the failure of somebody else.